Most people in Southern Africa would probably instantly recognize this beautiful black seed with the bright red arrow on top of it. The Zulus call it Nkehli because it reminds them of a betrothed maiden waiting to get married with her hair bound up in red ochre. But many people have different names for it and it's a common uh, seed that's used in decorative jewelry thread through a string and put around the neck as a necklace or a bracelet. And if you're not sure what these are, when you see these two pods and perhaps hear them clacking together, I'm pretty sure almost all of you would be able to tell me what this tree is. How's it guys? I'm Gus the African Plant Hunter. I'm in Chisirira National Park in the northwest of Zimbabwe, standing in front of a beautiful example of a mukamba tree. This is Afzelia quanzensis, the pod mahogany, known in Matabeleland, where I'm currently standing as Umkamba. So this is a very remarkable looking tree. It's a hardwood, but quite a fast growing one, uh, much fancied for its timber, which is called chamfuti commercially. So the timber primarily used in parquet flooring, wood paneling, uh, also, particularly for making furniture, especially, funnily enough, uh, dining tables and chairs. It's got a beautiful color. It's borer resistant, termite resistant, really strong, uh, lovely looking timber. And unfortunately, uh, the, the drive to uh, harvest the timber from these trees meant that during the early days of colonial settlement in Southern Africa, a lot of the bigger uh, mukamba trees were taken down and have not been replaced, which is very sad, but it's it's always a beautiful thing when you see one like this. By the way, this is one of the hardwoods that does actually grow really easily from seed, so no reason why you shouldn't be planting this at home. It also does bonsai really well. Uh, it just needs to be planted in a sandy soil and it will grow surprisingly quickly for a hardwood. It does not tolerate any frost though, so make sure you're in a frost-free area. This tree is much loved by birds and animals. Uh, the flowers, when they fall, are eaten by all kinds of wildlife. Uh, elephants like to browse the leaves and the pods. Birds that eat the, the pods, particularly, they like to eat the red arrow uh, around the seed and then uh, leave the seed, dropping the seed all around so that it plants and germinates. It's also a perfect habitat for many of the Caraxes butterflies in their reproductive cycles. So a lot of caterpillars that find their way up on these trees. So it's a perfect home uh, for butterflies. Many m traditional magical uses associated with this tree. Perhaps the best known one in this part of the world is as a preparation for huntsmen to ensure a successful hunt. So you take some of the bark, you, you powder it and mix it in water or in hot water, steep it overnight, and then the next day it's drunk by the hunter before he or she goes out for the hunt. And uh, that will ensure success. Also used to ward off evil spirits. If you mix some of the powdered bark with uh, oil, spread it on your body, that's said to keep the spirits away. A particularly medicinal use associated with bilhazia. It's not a very pleasant treatment, but it's said to be very effective. Uh, a liquid is made up from the bark and then it is inserted through a long reed through the urethra into the bladder and a whole cupful is squeezed in there to uh, irrigate the bladder and that is supposedly able to get rid of the bilhazia. There are many other medicinal uses. Uh, it's often used for stomach ailments. This tree has so many different beliefs associated with it in terms of protection and magic. It's not surprising to see uh, that it's also used medicinally. So it is part of the cisalpinoid, so it's a legume. It's got a compound leaf and of course these big very distinctive pods which you really can't miss. They're, they're absolutely solid rock hard. The bark by the way is also very distinctive. Sometimes uh, when there's no leaves and no pods, you may look at it and wonder what it is. But if you look at the bark, it looks a lot like actually like the mountain acacia, the uh, Brachystigia uh, glaucosens. Uh, so that kind of silvery gray look, and then when it peels away, you see the yellow underneath. It, it can grow in the right conditions up to 30 to 35 meters high. So it is a big, beautiful tree. 
All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that flying visit to the Mukamba Afzele Consensus, the Pod Mahogany. If you've liked it, there's a lot more that you can see similar to that in my series on notable trees of the African bush. Just go to uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, type in African Plant Hunter. You will find me there. And if you really like what I do and you'd like to support me, you can go to patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter and make a monthly pledge for basically the price of a pint of beer a month or a cup of coffee a month. And that really helps me to make more videos. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I am off to check out some other trees here in this beautiful piece of African wilderness. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye.